Dragonflight, with its new profession specialization options, gear choices, and different types of playstyles that you can go for, offers many different viable ways that one can go about building out their gathering characters. And how I like to play WoW nowadays is to not have to spend too much brain power effort and be able to chill while perhaps doing something on the side like watching a YouTube video. And so in today's video, I'd like to go over how I've attempted to maximize and optimize a gathering character with herbalism and mining while still retaining the chill, relaxing playstyle. And with that, starting off with profession specializations, and there are definitely multiple viable builds you can go with both herbalism and mining, but my personal builds definitely lean towards logging in for very short sessions, gathering sessions at that, instead of doing prolonged sessions, which would probably be more optimal with a slightly different build path. And I'll definitely touch on my recommendations for either place though. And first of all, and this is true of both mining and herbalism, which is that you want to max out the node that allows you to collect nodes while dragon riding. This you also want to pair with the dragon riding talent, dragon riders cultivation, which will give you increased vigor regeneration rate. So what you'll do is gather a node, wait for your vigor to regenerate for a couple of seconds with that buff that you get from the dragon riding talent, and then proceed to fly again to gather more nodes. Next, coming back to mining, you'll see that I've maxed out the center node for mastering the elements, and that's because if you get to the final node, you'll gain the ability to obtain one extra rousing element whenever you use the overload ability. And this is an ability that's now available with the new patch that is um, to every miner and herbalist, which is that you can actually, on a cooldown, overload elemental nodes for special buffs or increase the number of nodes from that one node that you'll be able to gather from. And so this build and strategy is indeed based on primarily gathering from elemental nodes around the Dragon Isles, right? And now moving on, the second um, node that I like to max out is in the mining process tree to max out the perception uh, sub node, so to speak. Because perception for mining, I think, is especially useful. By the way, if you max out this node, you have a chance of discovering the epic gem, uh, the base version of the epic gem called the Illuminate Diamond. But I've yet to find any from uh, Rich Ore. But anyway, even if you you know don't get the procs for these Illuminate Diamonds, by adding in perception, which is what you know this node does, you'll have an increased chance to get Kazgrite Ore, which as of right now is one of the few uh, commodities that has held up pretty well in price and is thus worth quite a decent amount. And I usually just sell them on the auction house uh, straight away, right, without using them for crafting or anything like that. So just for having a higher chance of getting this Kazgarite Ore, I prefer having a higher perception right here. And with that, any remaining points that I have, I'd like to put into the individual elements under Mastering the Elements, starting with the Titan Touched Ore, which gives me increased skill when gathering Titan Touched Ore, which contains the most valuable type of element, Rousing Order. And what I'll do is actually stop about halfway on each of the respective elements because by doing so, there's actually a specific node on each one that also further reduces the cooldown whenever you gather a node of the overload ability, right? So this overload ability, you can actually keep lowering the cooldown of and by specking into about half of each of these sub-nodes, sub um, there's also one of the main node in the middle, which allows you to, whenever you gather an elementally charged node, reduce the cooldown of overload, which will allow you to to use it again if you wanted to do longer sessions. By the way, the base cooldown on Overload is 12 hours, so for mining you get one, and for herbalism you also get one. So what I like to do is to oftentimes log in and just do one of each Overload and just log out. Or what you can do, and what I like to do for longer sessions with this build is be able to actually overload twice or even more than that by keeping on collecting elemental um, nodes, which will then greatly reduce the cooldown of each of your overloads, depending on whether you're gathering ore or herbs, right? And speaking of herbs, with my herbalism build, there are a lot of similarities in concept to um, what I went for for my mining one, but there are also some notable differences and also with just how the herbalism tree is built differently, right, obviously. So first of all, I definitely max out the dragon riding uh, collection talent. This is a given, and you know, usually the first talent or first node you wanna max out. Secondly, I also maxed out mastering the elements here because I wanted to focus on a more uh, log in and log out type of playstyle. do like a quick few minutes overload and log out. Um, instead of doing longer sessions. If I were to uh, actually focus on longer sessions though with my build, I would probably not go for mastering the elements. 
uh, first, not first at least, after my dragon riding one, I would go for Writhe Bark instead. And this is mainly because Writhe Bark has, kind of similar to Casgrade Ore, held up really well in terms of its value compared to all the other herbs. And so um, with the gathering route that you can take in the Azure Span, focus on Writhe Bark, and by going with a finesse build, you'll be able to gather a lot of these more valuable herbs, right? And this is actually good not just for longer sessions, but also for shorter ones as well. So I kind of regret going the route I did, but it is what it is, and I really don't think the difference in the order that you pick these you know, talent points is that significant anyway. So as you can see, what I've done is after doing Mastering the Elements, I actually went into Cultivation because I just wanted to try out the seed collection for fun. So this is like the tree uh, or seed collection uh, talent tree as well as Perception talent tree. So compared to Mining, Perception I think is a lot more useful for mining because you can get Kazgoy Ore, which is valuable, whereas Perception for for herbalism, I think doesn't net you that many valuable um, reagents. However, it does supposedly give you a higher chance of collecting the knowledge point skill up items, which can be very helpful in and of itself anyway and result in more gold gains over time. And speaking into this tree also gives you a higher chance of collecting these so-called seeds. There are, I think, four different types, as you can see here. None of them are worth very much except for the propagating route seedling. And each of these types of seeds you can plant in these rich soil nodes, similar to gathering nodes, but they're called rich soil. And you can just click on the seed, or you can also even buy some of the seeds off the auction house anyway. Um, they're cheap. And just whenever you see a rich soil mound, you can just plant a seed for various um, you know, herbalism nodes that you can grow out of it, right? For example, this is the best one, the propagating seed, which gave me a few extra nodes that I could pick up. But I did spec into this cultivation node for experimentation and fun, um, and I don't really recommend it for practical reasons, right? I would actually recommend either going for writhe bark first or going for the elements first, but I think both of those will be better than going for this cultivation route. Personally, after getting the Dragon Running perk, I would have gone and maxed out Writhe Bark, and then I would have come back to max out Mastering the Elements, and then similar to Mining, go into halfway of each of these uh, elements to give me the ability to further reduce the cooldown faster by collecting additional elementally charged nodes. And I'd probably prioritize maxing out Frost, even though Frost or Awaken and Rousing Frost isn't worth as much typically compared to the other elements. But because my Gathering Root is an Azure Span, I get the most um, frigid nodes out of anything. So just because of the frequency and how often I come across the frozen frigid nodes, that's why I would prioritize Frost for this specific Gathering Root. And with that, onto gearing. This is pretty straightforward. I typically recommend getting the blue gear if you can, especially on the non-tool. So the accessory slots, you have three slots, right? Two accessory slots and a tool slot. For the accessory slots, if you upgrade from the green to the blue, you actually get plus skill. I think it's plus six skill per um, item as well. Whereas if you upgrade from the tool, from the green to blue, you only get plus four skills. So, and those are a bit more expensive as well. So personally, I've placed crafting orders uh, for each of the blue items, the rare items for my mining and herbalism accessories. So that's four of the blues. But for the tools, I'm still using the green ones and I plan to craft it myself on my blacksmith, which is pretty close to being able to learn them. Now, when you're placing crafting orders, if you're not gonna craft them yourself, or even if you are gonna craft them yourself, um, there are different types of ranks of materials that you can use to craft them, right? To give you a higher quality if you typically use a higher rank uh, of materials. Now, for some of these, I don't necessarily recommend using the absolute highest rank of materials, especially if they're significantly more expensive, right? So what I would do as a general rule of thumb, or rather what I already did, is if I see that the rank three mats are hugely more expensive, like a few hundred or even, you know, a thousand gold more expensive per piece for the rank three up from the rank two. Usually the ranks one and two are about the same price. Um, I use, usually won't go for the rank three if it's too expensive in comparison. Whereas for ones that, you know, for like the resilient leather, for the rank threes, they're not that much more expensive than the rank twos. They're only slightly more expensive. I'll just go and buy the rank threes. 
And what's more is that the quality of this gear doesn't really matter that much anyway in my opinion as the plus skill regardless of quality is always going to be plus 6 for the blue gear at least and then the secondary stats are not going to change that much when you go up in rank. So it's really just for the min maxers. Um, if you want to spend like months of gathering, maybe there will be a difference, but otherwise I think the difference is pretty insignificant. And even if you just go for the green and common versions, that can be pretty good as well. But I do recommend at least getting the blue ones for the accessories because of the extra significant boost to plus skill that you get from them. And again, for the tools, I don't think it matters as much because you get plus 6 from the uncommon ones and only plus 10. So it's an increase of 4 if you get the blue ones, and they're a lot more expensive to upgrade. Now one thing that you do have to note is for the tools, you can actually get different secondary stats, um, either finesse, deafness, or perception. Again, with finesse giving you extra uh, resources of that node, of that base node, right? Whichever one that you're gathering. Perception giving you sort of a crit chance to get rarer items from that node like the Kazgoite ore that I mentioned earlier and like the profession knowledge um, tokens. And then deafness is just gathering speed, which is less useful usually. But the thing with the tools is that you can actually, um, this allows you to have gear swaps just with the tools. The accessories all come with the same stats regardless, um, but the tools you can potentially use um, different tools for different purposes, right? For mining, I typically just stick with perception again for the you know, increased chance of Kazgoite ore, so I don't do a swap with mining. And I do also enchant, and you can also enchant, right? Uh, you can buy the enchants from the auction house, um, my mining tool with perception. And then with herbalism, I have two tools, one enchanted with perception, one enchanted with uh, finesse, and also the tool itself having those respective stats, right? So the one with finesse, I'll enchant with finesse. The one with perception, I'll enchant with perception. And typically with herbalism, I mostly just stick to my perception tool until I find any writhe bark nodes, for which I will then swap over to finesse to theoretically anyway, be able to collect more uh, writhe bark from that node. And this will actually benefit even more if you have the writhe bark spec um, by going into the middle uh, center node there or the center tile point which gives you or allows your finesse to allow you to harvest even more writhe bark making this finesse build even more viable. Now if you'd like to make things even more efficient and also min-max things without too much extra effort, I had already mentioned the enchants from earlier, which you can, if you have an enchanter, unlock the recipes for from getting reputation with the Artisans Consortium or just buying up these enchants from the auction house. And by the way, if you do have an enchanter and want to not only provide these enchants for your gatherers and also other types of enchants for crafting, you can go down the um, artistry tree which will give you plus skill to these types of profession enchants and then also go down the generals tree to boost up your enchanting skill even further and more importantly get inspired devotion here you want to max out your inspiration to go for an inspiration build to be able to more consistently hit the max rank which will actually be the profitable enchants that you can sell at the auction house Next, for another supplemental profession for gatherers, you can actually go uh, with alchemy on another character, which by the way, I like to go for transmutation uh, specs. And then if you actually use files and discover more files with the uh, recipe for doing so, you actually have a chance of hitting a, uh, a couple of files actually, one for finesse and another one for perception. And you do have to discover this, so you can't learn them from anywhere or get them from reputation. But I do have currently the perception file. And by the way, notably, these are buy on pickups. So you either have to have an alchemist yourself and make the crafting or send out crafting orders for this character, or just you know request crafting orders from the auction house, which might be a bit less convenient. So it could be good if you really wanted to min-max things and happen to also want to have an alchemist or happen to have one, you can try you know discovering some files and perhaps even putting some points into file mastery to increase the quality of these files for your gatherer. Now last but not least, another profession that greatly supports gathering and actually any other profession as well is inscription because you're able to craft buy it on pickup by the way, so you would use crafting orders for this. But you can craft these treatises which on a weekly basis, and this is a consumable item that allows you to gain one profession knowledge point. 
on each of your professions, right? Uh, for each of the specific treatises that you use. So having an inscription or having a scribe is going to be really useful for this. Not to mention the fact that if you gather herbs, you can also send over some of your herbs. I usually like to sell my rank threes for the most part on the auction house and then send my ranks twos and ones and also my essences sometimes if they need it. Like rousing frost is quite useful for inscription uh, to my scribe to be able to process and make inks um, especially with my multi-craft spec i spec into milling fully as well as making inks fully and other things and uh, this will just make things a lot more efficient and sort of provide myself with a shuffle so to speak as i craft additional items on my scribe and one item that you can craft consider crafting is vantus runes if you want to go all the way through that but I'm not really gonna go into too much depth for crafting in this video because that's not gonna be the focus. So if you wanna check out more um, tips about crafting, be sure to check out my other videos. Next up for gathering and UI, I really just try to keep it simple and without too much clutter as I also don't wanna to spend too much like brain power or effort during my gathering. And um, so things like trackers for how much gold I'm making and things like that, I don't really bother with. In terms of UI, and of course this is really just personal preference, but you'll notice that my minimap is a little bit closer to the center of my screen than usual. And that's because it makes it a bit easier for me to mouse over which nodes I'm seeing, or are on the map rather, which allows me to do that a bit more conveniently and sort of be able to view my character and the map in a closer uh, sort of area. Anyhow, with Dragonflight's new UI editor, it's a lot easier now to test out different types of UI layouts and just really customize what works for you. Now for add-ons, I do again keep it very simple, although I suppose GatherMate 2 is somewhat helpful as it helps track the nodes that you've gathered. Even after you gather them, it'll mark the area on your minimap for your reference, uh, sort of for future reference, because a lot of the spawn points are the same. Next, for a couple of add-ons that I do find to be pretty much indispensable, whether it be for buying stuff from the auction house or gathering or crafting, the first of which is Trade Skill Master, which will allow you to get tool tips of current prices of any item in your inventory just by hovering over it in your cursor. The second one is Auctionator, which especially if you're crafting, will help you determine how much you know an item will cost to craft as well as the profit based on the current prices on the auction house after you've done a quick search. Now as for my gathering roots, I also like to keep it very chill and simple. First of all, oftentimes I like to start in the waking shores, basically just fly over from Valdraken from the southeast or towards the northwest, right? And actually look for especially mining nodes to overload. Sometimes you can also find windswept ore uh, or windswept herbalism nodes rather uh, because you can't really find those in uh, the Azure Span and those are actually quite nice. Uh, compared to the frost ones that you get in the Azure Span. So I would definitely keep an eye out for those. And of course, if you come across any Titan touched nodes, those are actually going to be the best, except you don't want to overload them because when you overload them, that's not quite worth it because all they do is spawn a portal to another node, which can just be a normal node. And so again, the purpose of going to the Waking Shores first, and this is completely optional by the way, but personally I like to just go there really quickly to see if I have any mining nodes to overload, right? Because those are more rare in the Azure Span, but you can still occasionally find them, especially more on the eastern side in some of the caves. Um, but even if you don't go to the Waking Shores, just going through the Azure Span, for example, if you're flying over from the Tuscar village from the southwest, um, and just kind of circle around the bottom uh, southern edge around the woodland areas, you should be able to usually at least find decent numbers of Wraith Bark, which will be the main node that you're going to be hunting for, in addition to any elementally um, you know, infused nodes, which you can also overload if you have the cooldown. Um, the frost ones are actually decent as well, because when you overload them, they actually spawn another sort of herb that you can actually DPS down. And once you do that, it actually spawns additional nodes many of which can actually be um, gathered for things like writhe bark even and different types of herbs, not just necessarily the one that you overloaded, right? For example, if you overload even the cheapest herb, Aachen Bloom, uh, you can still spawn additional writhe bark from it. And for just some other quick tips about gathering, for mining, I prefer overloading hardened nodes, which give you rousing earth. 
and maybe it's been stealth nerf but I get usually or I had been getting quite a lot of extra resources by overloading them but I feel like recently they've sort of decreased so even if you come across a different type say the molten one for you know mining that can be okay as well especially since I think recently rousing fire has sort of increased in value so with mining these are the two main ones that you'll find in addition to the titan touched ones right um, titan touched you obviously don't overload so again I personally still prefer overloading the hardened ones and again these are more commonly found towards mountainous areas as well as caves so if you want you can check out some of the eastern sites of the azure span or of course the different mountainous parts and there are many in the waking shores and of course whenever you're gathering you also want to have war mode on to be able to gather the inferior nodes for additional rousing ires which are worth a decent amount as well next if you have the dragon skill expedition renown at, at least rank 5 you'll be able to gather disturbed dirt and if you actually get to renown 16 you'll be able to gather magic bound chests but even with just the disturbed dirt I actually recommend picking these up for the most part because even though they're not going to directly get you that much gold, they can actually have a pretty decent chance of dropping profession knowledge tokens which will benefit your gathering and gold making in the long run as well. Now as I've sort of mentioned before, after each session of gathering, I like to return to whatever you know encampment that's close by or even hearth back to Valdraken to sell some of the items. Again, I typically sell the rank 3 items that are more valuable and then mail the rank 2s and 1s to my characters that I can use them, namely mainly my uh, scribe for uh, herbs, although you could definitely use alchemy if that's what you have or prefer, but I mainly send them all to my uh, scribe and then for my ore I send them to my engineer as well as my blacksmith many to my engineer actually including rousing fire and rousing earth notably because they're actually using a lot of well engineering crafts obviously and lastly I also send uh, some rousing or awaken order um, and some other elements to my jewel crafter as needed for crafting gems. There are a lot of ways obviously that you can use these resources besides selling them for uh, if you want to use them for crafting depending on the types of you know professions that you have on your alts and whatnot. So if you want to check out some easy specs that you can also set up quite quickly on any alts that you might have lying around do consider checking out the video i have linked in the description box below covering one-time gold making ideas for which the second half covers easy profession specs and for just a couple more things to know and have as important parts of your routine one of which is to always on a weekly basis go back to Valdraken in case you forget to go back right having perhaps park your character in the azure span which I've done sometimes, but always on a weekly basis, go back to Valdraken to pick up the two weekly quests. Well, one for each profession, right? So you have uh, one weekly quest for mining and another for herbalism, which will require you to turn in certain items, which you don't even have to gather and can just buy it from your auction house if you don't have them handy, and can just turn in the quests for some artisan's consumption reputation, as well as uh, bonus profession knowledge points. And now in case you're not aware, there are also one-time sources of profession knowledge from profession masters that you can find in the Waking Shores. There's one for obviously herbalism and for mining, and each will give you 10 knowledge points for free. The herbalism one is right here in the Onaran Plains, whereas the mining one can be found at Faldrasis at these coordinates. And lastly, I just like to try something a bit different and creative and fun by just sharing the YouTube channels that I like to watch while doing my gathering sessions. So first, I've really been enjoying and finding helpful the Andrew Huberman channel, which covers lots of science-based tools for sort of optimizing your lifestyle and health. Next, Lex Friedman's podcast I found offer very insightful scientific and philosophical debates. For instance, I really enjoyed the episode with Natalie Cabral in which they talk about alien life. Following that, Meet Kevin is my go-to YouTube channel for everything investing and economy related. And finally, last but not least, who doesn't enjoy some Asmund Gold for gaming and popular culture content? And that is pretty much all I want to cover in today's video. Like the video if you liked it or found it helpful. Be sure to comment down below if you have anything to add and I'll definitely reply to your comments. And with that, I will see you in the next video. Peace.